and welcome back to Mad About Cards and Crafts. Today I'm pleased to bring you an Elizabeth Craft Designs project. Most of my projects have been on social media. You can find inspiration on my Instagram account as well as my blog and those are both linked in my description box below. The Beautiful Blooms collection uh, has several different florals that are available. This one is called Mindfulness. There are three flowers and three different hummingbirds, two sentiments. I want to mention that the dies, which I do have the coordinating dies, also cut out the sentiments. So for all of the Beautiful Bloom collections, there are dies for the sentiments. I'll be using that sentiment, which comes from the Forever stamp set. And then this is called Organic Triangle Background. I wanted to show you that there is a die that you put around the edge and that will allow you to cut out the panel. Instead, today I'm going to be using this as an embossing folder. But first we need to get a little bit of ink down on our paper. I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of cardstock and I'm going to do some ink blending with Distress Oxide inks. I have four colors. The first color that I started with was called Seedless Preserves. As you can see, I'm mixing between the Seedless Preserves and the Wilted Violet. That will help smooth out the transition between the Oxide inks. This third color is Prized Ribbon, and then I will finish off with Blueprint Sketch. I should mention that as these dry, they will also blend just a little bit more, so my finished card will be a little bit more blended than what it appears on screen. So that ink is going to stay wet for quite some time. I am putting a lot of ink, as you can see, I am going back and forth between those lines. Distress Oxide ink is much easier to blend than any other ink that I have in my collection. My favorite thing to do is to oxidize that ink, so I was very uh, heavy-handed. I added some water into the palm of my hand and I clapped over the top of that card panel, and that gave me all those large oxidized spots on the panel. Here's where we're going to, going to do some embossing. I'm going to lay down my embossing pad. So to use the die cutting machine for embossing, I have a rubber pad that will go in between my sandwich. I'll run it through my machine and I will have an a beautiful embossed background. Now it's going to be a little bit more difficult to see. I was very fortunate that I got a great picture of this. So at the beginning of this video and at the end, you'll be able to see just how beautiful the embossing looks like in person. I trimmed my panel down to four by five and a quarter inches because I do like to leave a little bit of a border around the edge when I place it on my card base. This is a trick for stamping. I cut out my images first. As I mentioned, I do have the dies for the stamps. I cut them out and once I did that, I placed my stamps in the negative space and then I picked it up with my Misty Door. I replaced the negatives or the positives into the negative space and then I stamped using Copic Friendly ink. We're going to start by coloring up our hummingbird. I did some fairly simple coloring on this. I started with some pinks, and so I went with an R6, which was my darkest color on the left side of his head, and I blended that out with an R4. A hummingbird, well, there's several different colors for hummingbirds. I happen to have black hummingbirds with purple necks here, but I really like the pink and green, so I went with this style of hummingbirds. But the greens on their neck are not all going to be the same. Uh, so what I chose to do was for the body, I went with YG seven and five, and then I changed up the green just a little bit, and I added YG 23 and 25. I felt that I needed a little bit more shadowing, so here I'm using a YG, I think it's a 45, and that's allowing me to add just a little bit of shadow to my hummingbird. 
we're going to color the beak with a W9 and then we're going to move on to our floral. Because the stems are so very thin, I used the YG45 on the stem. You can see that I did do a little bit of a flicking motion on the leaves with that YG45 and then I added a YG25 over the top of that. For my flowers, I wanted more of a purple blue, so I went with my darkest color, which is going to be a B69. You can see I'm doing a bit of a flicking motion with that. I'm coming in from the tip of the petal to the inside of the petal with the B66, and I'll blend it all out and add the B60 also uh, very heavily to the center of the flower. One of my favorite things to do is to add highlights with a gel pen, so I will be doing that. I add kind of like a stippling motion, and of course hummingbirds do tend to have texture. So this hummingbird stamp set does have black speckles on the chest, and you can see some of them going down the body of the bird. I am going to go over some of those with the white gel pen and then I'm going to add a few more of my own. All right, I wanna get a good look at how this is fitting on my card and I love those two together. I'm gonna to add that stippling right here I had to get my pen going. Sometimes that pen doesn't want to work so well. But instead of adding a lot of lines, which if I'm working with critters or something like that, I will add a lot of lines along with the dots. But because of this being more like a lily flower and because of the texture of the hummingbird, I went with more of the stippling and then I added just a few lines to the leaves. And that just really helps the image pop. Now I could have stamped my sentiment first but I didn't think about that so I am going to stamp it now. Remember there is embossing on this so I am going to have some dips and the best way for me to stamp on a panel like this is to use VersaFine ink. So I have VersaFine Black Onyx ink and I'm going to stamp it a couple of times. That's going to just show me where that ink is. I know that the VersaFine always inks very well and I don't have to worry about getting a really terrible impression, but I'm going to fix any of those little divots that are missing because of the indentation of the embossing folder with a micron pen. So so here I'm going to put my ink away and I'm going to bring over my micron pen and I'm just going to define some of those letters that the ink wasn't able to get into the crevices where the embossing folder was and that works just fine. For my images, for my um, hummingbird and for my floral I did want to add a little bit of dimension to them. I love dimension on my cards. Here is a green card panel. That card panel is cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I thought that it went really well with the hummingbird. I wanted to break up the composition of the card, kind of use the same colors in the background and of course around the edge of my card using the green. And then of course I have the purples and blues and so now I'm going to remove the backing from my tape and I'm going to start adhering these. And by adding that little bit of dimension, it's going to break up the colors just a little bit more and allow the flower and the hummingbird to really stand out. Now, I don't like the placement of this. And so I am going to lift it. I tend to not press things down really hard to begin with because if I want to reposition it, it really helps me out. And then I'm going to add this card panel to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top, holding, top folding card base. I'm going to add some iridescent little jewels that I had in my stash. 
uh, three at the top, three at the bottom, and that's going to finish my card for today. So I hope you enjoyed this project. I will, again, have all of the products that I used linked in the description box below. Please make sure if you like this video to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe and ring the bell so that you're notified whenever I do upload a new video. Until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks so much for stopping by.